Well, brothers and sisters, welcome to another edition of the Don't Miss This in Online Seminary. Uh, super stoked to be able to talk about this next week and really, really grateful for all that you're doing in seminary. Once again, um, this is recorded for most of you who can't come um, in person. Well, let's just dive right into Canvas to start off because I just want to go through some of the cool things that I'm seeing this next week because literally it, there is some fun, fun doctrines to be able to get into. So as we're looking at, at next week, we're going to be in First and Second Th Thessalonians. So just looking at the context of what the way the class is set up right now, once again, you've got this class community set up that, that the curriculum's done. You're more than welcome to edit anything in this, but the way that they've got this, um, this week's design is to just kind of, what's going on? What what are some things that are, are about the gospel of Jesus Christ with, with Thessalonians? So it's it's pretty it's a pretty decent question to ask. Once again, you can change anything you want with, with this uh, this first discussion. Now, let me go back to modules real quick and, and just show you the way that it's set up. So right at the beginning, we've got two discussion pages. Now, there was a couple questions that came in in the weekly check-in that said, my canvas doesn't look like this. Make sure you reach out to me and let's get the um, the setup corrected for you. This this Canvas setup is a little bit different than the state class setup. What Salt Lake did is they allowed for the online seminary programs to automatically start with the setup that it's gonna be in for 2024, which has the discussions already in integrated in there. So if you don't have discussions, you just have the assignments, you have the state class one. So let's get that fixed. Just reach out to me and I'll get that taken care of for you. Now this week, what, the way that it's set up is we've got two discussions an assignment, a quiz, and then an assessment. And so this is kind of assessing, here's the things you're supposed to have known for this week. And so the cool thing about this week to me is, regardless of where you're going to be in your video conference, I think this doctrinal mastery quiz is really a second part to this th second Thessalonians. And so you could really have these uh, be the same day if you want to have that be something um, for that doctrinal mastery. But one once again, if you'd like, you can just unpublish it. Now, the way that it's set up this week is you're going to have, it's going to go a lot on the ministering of the saints. Right, right away, we're going to talk about ministering. You're going to talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ. You're going to talk about the apostasy. And that's really why doctrinal master here is, is a part of it is because we're going to talk about the falling away. This is a great missionary scripture. This is exactly what they teach on the mission. But it's also a really good one for our youth to understand as they have questions. And let me explain why just a personal experience. So here in Springfield, Missouri, my kids go to a very small high school. Um, my daughter's uh, senior class was like 35. That's kind of the, the size of my school. Everybody knows everybody. And my daughter, Sadie, who is a uh, a freshman in high school, she has a really good friend. And they've become pretty good buddies. And she her friend is asking a lot of questions about the church. And so my daughter has been doing a lot of things to help her to understand. She's making a lot of invitations. She gave her a Book of Mormon. And one of the questions that she had which is like perfectly aligned with this week because it was this week or this next week because it was just yesterday this question came to my daughter about what sets your church apart from her, her Baptist church. Why is it that you needed to start this church? And so this is going to give her the ability. We actually already started to talk about this doctoral mastery in my family to be able to give her the strength to be able to answer that question on her own and to help her as she helps the missionaries. So this is a really good topic, but let's talk specifically at this first one. This is beautifully set up. It's all about ministering. Now, the reason why I love this is because our youth are ministers. They're in the ministering situation um, and they most likely have a ministering companion and if you're anything like me, ministering, when it changed from home teaching to ministering, it's like, well, what exactly is this ministering? 
First Thessalonians sections or chapters one through three <clears throat> allows Paul to teach us and our youth what ministering is. A really good resource is uh, this page. What is ministering? This or this is ministering, and I'll put the link in the in the chat when we um, send this out. This has a lot of really good stuff. This thirty second clip kind of is a really good montage, but you've got some great. Uh, quotes from Elder Holland and Sister uh, Bingham, some really good suggestions, some quotes that you can use, some visuals that can be cut and paste. This is a good one to, to be able to use to kind of supplement what you're going to be talking about. So, uh, And the reason why I bring that up is because this is a discussion page. And so as you're having discussions happening, you can answer those discretion, discussions or um help move the discussion to a really good place by using some of the supplemental experiences with what is ministering. So that's a, a, a nice little uh, help with, excuse me, a help with that. And we're going to come back to this because um, I love, I love ministering a lot. Um, when it comes to the second coming, the reason why this is going to be a good one to have a, an understanding of is it's a Q and a, um, set up so that they're going to be asking and answering some pretty common questions. The only supplemental thing that I would recommend um, is go to the topics and, and questions in the library and go to second coming of Jesus Christ. And the reason for that, and, and this is the caution, especially in seminaries and institutes, we need to be very clear of the doctrine that's been revealed. There are a lot of things out there about the second coming. A lot of ideas, a lot of things have been said. And so be crystal clear. Use sources. These, This is the best divinely appointed source you could go to on the second coming because it has uh, the scriptures that you can use. It has some, some great uh, messages from church leaders that you can have as resources as well. Some videos that you can use. Um, a lot of really good stuff. So as your students come here, um, I've noticed in seminary that a lot of times when we started to talk about the second coming, that kids have a lot of questions um, or they heard something and they want it clarified. And so if that happens, especially if you're using this as a video conference day, um, be prepared. I would I would have that uh, second coming resource available. So you can just say, you know, that's a really good question. Here's what the scriptures say, or here's what the brethren are saying, or here's what... Um, there's a really good quote from General Conference about this here. Uh, that will give you a really good resource to be able to use. So then the, the next fantastic discussion is about the apostasy. So when Paul is talking about the falling away, and he's teaching um, uh, and giving this prophecy that before the second coming happens, there's going to be a falling away that takes place. This is such a good doctrine to be able to spend some time in it. There's a lot of neat here that we can use. Some supplemental resources that I would recommend, Preach My Gospel. Uh, they're going to be using that as a missionary anyway, so this would be a really good resource to use for, for teaching the great apostasy, but also to help it keep it simple and to be able to make it to where it's very clear so they can clearly identify and explain to a friend about what the, the apostasy or the falling away is. Uh, and that matches once again with that scripture mastery or the, excuse me, that doctrinal mastery in second Thessalonians two, one through three. So the way that this is set up is it's just a regular doctrinal mastery quiz that they've set up to help you understand and apply the, the, the experiences in, uh, uh, with the apostasy. Now, the last one is our, it's one of those assessments that we have. And so it's, uh, uh, it's set up to be able to be a quiz, to be able to, um, or excuse me, a writing experience, to be able to choose understanding certain things about, you've got the great apostasy, you've got um, love and, and, and serving the savior and putting on the whole armor of God. So these are doctrines that are really important for our youth to understand. And so that's the purpose of the assessor learning is to make sure they understand and have gained application for these resources. So hopefully that's um, kind of the resource of understanding it, uh, the way that this week is set up. Um, I want to go on to two points, though, with this in terms of how do we make this an engaging experience with our students? This week, our micro training is all about 
connecting students to Jesus Christ through Christ-centered questions and announcements. So I just want to explain a little bit with the definition. One way that you can help students place Jesus Christ at the center of their learning is to ask questions focused on Jesus Christ that help them connect with the way they're learning his character and attributes. These questions can prepare you in your weekly announcements. They could be a part of your discussion in your video conference. It could be something you do in your discussion board. But it really helps us remember that ministering is about Jesus Christ. The second coming, obviously, is about Jesus Christ. Falling away from Jesus Christ's gospel teachings um, and and the, the, the keys of the priesthood. And helping our students understand that it's still everything is focused on the Savior. Um, I want to just take a second to listen to um, Elder Holland as he explains this um, a little bit more. Just one second as I pull this up. It's just a quick clip from Elder Holland. And I got to stop sharing and reshare. That's what I got to do. Sorry. We all want to teach like Jesus taught. His instruction was simple and direct and powerful. He often told stories or parables that people could readily understand. Without exception, his lessons were spiritually motivating. He loved his audience, and the ones who had ears to hear and eyes to see loved him. That kind of spiritual instruction with that kind of loving relationship between teacher and learner is what we hope we can find existing in every home, classroom, and meeting house of the church. Now, some of you out there feel overwhelmed already, doubting not only your ability to teach like the Savior taught, but doubting your ability to teach at all. Put those thoughts away right now. You can do this. President Monson has said throughout his ministry, whom the Lord calls, the Lord qualifies. He will help you. That's who he is. That's what he does. He will give you revelation through the Holy Ghost, the ultimate teacher of truth. You have loving leaders committed to orienting, training, and encouraging you. You have newly organized teacher council meetings in which other teachers will share ideas with you. You have manuals and teaching tips and a host of ancillary resources at your fingertips. You can do this. If you still feel inadequate, then take comfort in a verse that I've needed all my life. The promise that the gospel will be proclaimed by the weak and the simple unto the ends of the world. Now, if we feel a little weak and a little simple, that's all right, because so too have the others who've gone before us and think what they have done. God will hear your prayers and he will reward your humble effort. He always has and he always will. So, brothers and sisters, I just wanted to um, bear testimony of what I'm seeing. I've had I've had a couple of you reach out, feeling inadequate or feeling like you can't do this, and and how do I do this? And and the struggles of technology are real. And and I just want to say you're doing awesome. You truly are. I just bear testimony of that. I have had the chance to reach out to to many of you and and I have been so impressed by your desires to seek the Lord's will and desires to serve these wonderful youth. And I just love what you're doing. Please recognize when you go through the ministering concepts with what Paul is saying, that's you. The technology doesn't matter. Canvas doesn't matter. Zoom doesn't matter. What matters is Jesus Christ. 
and these amazing youth and you. That's what matters. And so we want to use the technology to be able to help these youth know that you love them and know that Jesus Christ loves them. And so I just want you to know that you're seen. I know the great things that you're doing. And I promise and I bear testimony that you are doing amazing things in your classroom. Students that have had their their schedules change and, and are choosing to go back to an in-person experience, um, I've had several call. And the one thing that they regret <laughs> is they love that their schedules have changed because it's been able to make it work for their schedule situation. But almost every single one has mentioned they are going to miss you because they feel that you love them. That's what we're trying to do in this, this whole program of seminaries and institute is help to minister to the one. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. As you're going through and trying to, to teach and to testify, remember the council and what we learn from this week in ministry. If you work with the Savior, miracles happen. I know that is true. Please spend time on your knees as you work with your students, as you work with your study. But recognize that as you do everything that's really cool about Canvas and Zoom, if you're not doing it with him, it doesn't matter. So do it with him. I bear you testimony that Jesus Christ lives and this is his church. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's stop the recording.